Hi everyone, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part eight. So let's get started. Here we have an image of Boris Johnson. He's the current Prime Minister of the UK. We can find out quite easily where it was taken, but how do we find out exactly when it was taken? To do this, we're going to turn Boris into a sundial, and we're going to go through the process and detail the steps on how we find out the time of when this image was taken. We're going to do this in a number of steps. First, we're going to have a look at the context of the image and see what we can identify in the image that might give us clues as to where and when it was taken. Number two, we're going to go further and geolocate the image, find out exactly where it was taken. And you can probably already have a few guesses as to where right now. Number three, we're going to have a look at when it was taken. And to do that, we're going to do a shadow calculation or turn Boris into a sundial. To do that, we need to look at four different variables. The height of the object, or how tall is Boris? The length of his shadow, so how long the shadow is that he's casting? We'll also need to know the azimuth, so the direction of sunlight, and we'll also need to know the altitude. And we're going to replicate all of this in SunCalc, which is a really handy tool it's a free to use website and we'll be able to identify the exact time that photo was taken just by using Boris Johnson's shadow. Is this technique new? No, it's not. It's part of a digital investigators toolkit when looking at verifying footage or images and trying to identify when they would have been taken. One case study that we can look at that I worked on with a team was from BBC Africa Eye where we documented the location and time of where two women and children were executed in Cameroon. This technique was also used by forensic architecture to look at bombings in Rafa. And this technique was also used by Bellingcat in the verification and documentation of footage of an execution in Nagorno-Karabakh. You can find links to all of these case studies and more and also the tools and techniques in the description below. In this example, I'm not going to use some of the more horrific human rights footage uh, that was used in those case studies, but I'm going to take a easier and more lighter on approach for the purposes of this tutorial. Specifically, we're looking at Boris Johnson here or a photo of him. And we want to verify exactly when this photo was taken. So how do we do that? We mentioned the steps before. And the first step was obviously looking at the context. So what clues can we draw out of this image to give us some context as to when this photo may have been taken? Well, if we remember back to some of the previous episodes, one of the ways was having a look at doing an image reverse search. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm pasting my image in and we can do an image reverse search. And already we have one clue. Uh, as to the next one, which was to geolocate the image, it immediately says 10 Downing Street, which is quite handy. So now we know that this photo was taken at 10 Downing Street, and we can also see the little 10 there. We also have Larry the cat in the corner from 10 Downing Street, for those of you that are a fan of the 10 Downing Street cat. So in having a look at the further context of this image, uh, we already know what location it would have been taken, so it's given us 10 Downing Street and that makes sense just given what we can see in the photo of Boris Johnson. If we go down a little bit more, we might be able to see other forms of the image. For example, we've got one here as well and one here. There's lots of images, but none of them are exactly the same as we can see that we've got the little flags here and we also have a lot of uh, pictures which look like they might be school pictures in the windows. I'll also do an image reverse search with Yandex just to double check and remember these are two separate image reverse search platforms Yandex and Google image reverse search so we can always have a look at the alternative results that we get. So we've got something from VOA News and this looks exactly like our photo. 
what do we have uh, down here? Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson talks to journalists outside 10 Downing Street to mark the 75th anniversary of VE Day in London, May 8, 2020. Great. So it's given us a date, May 8, 2020, VE Day, but we want to know the exact time. Now, this has given us a big clue, which is really helpful. So now we know what location and what day this might have been taken. This being May 8, 2020 makes a lot of sense as well as this was during the coronavirus period. And we can see in the window up here uh, and, and on both sides, we can see a lot of the artwork that might have been drawn by school children or children at home uh, for the NHS and showing their appreciation of the NHS. We also notice the flags around there, uh, which would have been put there for VE Day as well. Okay, great. So now that we have those two variables, uh, we have context. This photo would have been taken on VE Day, May 8, 2020 at 10 Downing Street. Now we can start to really get a lot more narrow in terms of exactly when this photo was taken. So how can we do that? Well, we have to look at four things. We need to look at the height of Boris Johnson, the length of the shadow. We need to look at the altitude of the shadow. And then we need to look at the azimuth as well. And the azimuth will be uh, something that we can look at uh, in, in terms of using Google Earth. We can have a look at the direction of sunlight as well, which will allow us to effectively turn Boris Johnson into a sundial. Now, for those of you a little bit lost on these steps, you can also just go back to that tool that I mentioned, SunCalc, which we'll be using a lot of, and you'll see the variables that we have on here. So. You can easily just hover over on each one of these on SunCalc and get that description. Okay, so let's start. So the first thing I want to do is maybe change my contrast in this image a little bit. Now I'm using Preview on a Mac, so I'm just going to adjust the color of the image. I'm going to make it a little bit dark and up the contrast. You'll notice that when I up the contrast, we can see Boris Johnson's shadow a little bit stronger. And that's why I'm doing this. Okay, so next step, we want to look at some measurements. The first thing that I want is A. And that's the length of the object or the height of the object, I should say. Now, in this case, our object that's creating the shadow is Boris Johnson. So I want to know how high or how tall is Boris? What's his length? We have a pretty good measurement here. Boris Johnson is 1.75 meters tall. I'm going to go back to my image and I'm going to say A equals 1.75 M. The next one we want is the length. So I'm going to draw another line and this will be for the length of the shadow. Now we can see the shadow just cuts off at this part down here, just where the step starts. So I'm going to draw that line there and we're going to call this line B. We need to know what B is as well. How on earth do we do that? Well, first of all, we needed to have geolocated this image. Now we know it's at the front of 10 Downing Street. So let's go there on Google Maps. And I'm going to zoom in on this location. So this is obviously 10 Downing Street. We can see the images there. They match what we've got with Boris right here. Thankfully, London has Google Street View. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer because I really want to get granular with the detail that we're looking for here. I want to get right up close to see this area because this is where Boris was. So what we can see, this pavement right here where Boris is, and we can see that right here. What we need to do is replicate this exact same image in Google Earth so that we can measure the length from here to here and get the measurement of B. So let's go to Google Earth. I've got 10 Downing Street as a location in here. We can see the front archway in the door right here. That's where Boris would have been standing. So I'm gonna pop a pin where Boris would have been standing and we're going to measure that line coming back from here. One way to do this, I always like to draw an operation box of the area that I'm looking at. So I just did that by using a polygon 
and we can stretch out a polygon from bit to bit. So I've created a nice, a pre-made, a nice little operating area right there. And we can start to turn this into almost like a grid that we're looking at. Now the line would be coming back from the pin right to this corner of the gateway right there. So that's exactly what we're after, this shadow line. Now to draw a line in Google Earth is quite simple. Uh, all we have to do is use this function up here, add new path, and we can easily drag that around. So how long is that line? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. Either we can get info and we can have a look at the length of this line in meters. It says here that the shadow line is 1.46 meters, so that's quite helpful. And we can also use, just for easy reference, the ruler as well. So I'll use the ruler going from the Boris pin and I'll measure my shadow line. So we have a, me a shadow meter of 1.5 meters. I'm going to pop that in there, B equals, because this is our shadow length, remember this line, B equals 1.5 meters. Because we have those two variables, it helps us get a third variable. If any of you remember trigonometry, you'll remember that we have opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, and these allow us to start figuring out angles. Because we have A and B, we can work out the angle of X. X will be this angle that we have right there. This is the angle that we want to identify for here. A way to identify that angle is by using trigonometry calculator like this one. Again, the link to this tool will be in the description below. So what we have here is A, B, and we want to get the capital A. In this case, I've actually called it uh, X, so we'll just replace that with a little X. Okay, so side A was 1.75 meters, side B was 1.5. And now we're going to click calculate. Great. Angle A is 49.39 degrees. So now we have another variable, x equals 49.39. So now the last variable we need is the azimuth of the sun line. So I've pre-created another line here, which is the direction of the sunlight. Now just to explain the direction of the sunlight and the shadow, Notice that when the shadow changes its direction and length, it is always in proportion with the direction of the sunlight as well. So if we already know the shadow line for our Boris Johnson image, which goes from his foot right to the corner of this fence post, then we know that the sun goes in a exact straight, same straight line from the Boris pin and matching up with this shadow line. So I've created a line here for in yellow indicating the direction of the sunlight. I'm going to use my ruler and measure from my Boris pin. Now something that you'll notice over here are the degrees of the direction of sunlight as 138.13 degrees. And that's the angle that we need. Perfect. So 138.13 degrees. I'm going to put that in my image over here. So we have all these variables in place. Now let's use the sun calc. The first and most important thing with sun calc is to get your geolocation correct. In order to do that, I've already placed my pin down where Boris would have been standing, so I'm going to right click on him. I'm going to take these coordinates. So I'm going to just paste the coordinates into the SunCalc URL up here. In the URL up here is obviously the website. And then we have the latitude, which is 51.5 degrees. And then we have the longitude which is minus 0.12 and then we also have a figure here after the comma now this figure is quite important if we were to put number four we'll notice that it zooms all the way out if we put uh, let's say 15 
that's zoomed in a bit more and if we put 19 which should be full zoom with satellite on we'll zoom in that's the zoom level or the height level and then this will be the date afterwards and we already know uh, that our image was taken on May 8 so we'll change it back to that okay so first thing and this is the one variable that we can put in that we can change is the height or object height now the object height is the uh, height of the object causing the shadow or casting the shadow in this case it is the height or or how tall Boris Johnson is which is 1.75 meters so the shadow here at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning is 4.28 meters that's definitely not like it was here we actually have or we measured the shadow to be around about 1.5 meters give or take a few centimeters so in looking at these three variables that we have here we want our shadow length to be about 1.5 meters uh, we want x or our altitude to be about 49 uh, degrees and we want our azimuth to be 138 degrees what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll around until we're about at 138 degrees so we'll keep an eye on that one okay so we have to stop at 138.31 close and we have 1.48 meters and we also have 49.39 very close now you can see that when I make a subtle change between 11.10 and 11.07 that we get these very similar readings we're getting 49 on the altitude which is there we're getting 137 which is only 2 degrees off on the azimuth and we're getting the exact length of our shadow as well so the only time that this image could have been taken on the 8th of May 2020 is just after the turn of the hour at 11 a.m. at 11:10 a.m. we have 138 and 49 degrees and we're almost going too far if we go to closer to 11:05 so we can safely say that this image was taken after 11 a.m. in the morning and it was definitely taken before 11:15 these findings actually make a fair bit of sense if we have a look at the context uh, of this photo as well we know that this was taken on V-Day and if we have a look at what happens on V-Day we know that there is a national two minutes of silence at 11 a.m. now this wouldn't have been during that period but it's likely that this would have happened after uh, so if we have a look at these variables the ones that we've identified here uh, we can see and, and taking into context of what happens on VE day after 11 a.m. we can find and cross-reference that information with our findings and identify that uh, in fact we are very much close to the mark before 11.15 a.m. at around about 11.05 to 11.10 a.m. our variables match this was a little bit of a more technical uh, look at imagery forensics which some people like to refer to it uh, but again a lot of things can be identified just by a simple photo or a simple video in future cases we'll have a look at applying these sorts of methods to human rights videos especially in locations where we can't get good satellite imagery or we can't get close access to the ground but at least we can place a video or a photo of a specific incident on a temporal map or a chronological map to identify that it may have happened around a specific hour or around a specific half hour or just in the beginning of the day or after the or towards the end of the day so thank you very much for tuning into this session again i really appreciate all the likes comments and shares that everyone has been providing uh, don't forget to click subscribe and you'll find all of the links to all of the case studies tools and other reading material that i've mentioned in the description below and i'll see you in the next episode